off the bat, who is Peter Anthony Red? Peter Anthony Red is a singer-songwriter uh, slash wannabe pianist uh, who desperately needs to make music in order to make himself feel better uh, <laughs> via the magic of catharsis. Interesting, man. Who or what made you want to sing? Um, I started singing, singing, uh, probably around <clears throat> 17, yeah, I think 17 to 18 years old. Um, Tori Amos is my biggest influence, I think, uh, is pr probably obvious to some people who are familiar with her work, but, um, you know, uh, up until the point that I had heard Tori Amos is under the pink album, it's her second album. Um, yeah. I had only listened to hip hop, you know, and and uh, pop radio and Spanish music my whole life. Like that's all I ever listened to. I didn't ever listen to rock. I never listened to anything. It's just hip hop, hip hop, hip hop. And uh, you know, when I heard her stuff, something opened in my head, and uh, I could I just experienced music differently than I did before, and it spoke to me. Yeah. So uh, I just started singing, 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 singing all of her stuff, and uh, eventually I started writing my own songs uh, on the piano as well. So it all kind of happened at the same exact time. It was weird, yeah. really weird. Okay. Yeah, that sort of leads me on to my next question, which is, is it just the piano that you play, or do you sort of meddle in other instruments as well? Uh, mainly piano. Uh, piano is definitely my favorite intru instrument on the planet, um, there's a tonality to it, like a warmth to it that I don't, yeah. I don't feel like any other instrument has. Um, and besides strings, I don't really think that any other instrument is able to get emotion, uh, convey emotion the way the piano does. Yeah, um, I, I agree with you on that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, piano, piano is definitely the only thing I play. I mean, if you count synthesizers, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can play, the, I can play the shit out of some synthesizers. Cool, man. Okay. What artists can you hear within your own music that you've recorded? Other than who you think you've been influenced, if you listen to your own stuff, who can can you hear anyone that you might not not necessarily have thought you were influenced by? Oh, um, yeah, I think I mean I feel like I've been influenced by everything around me, and that's the generic mm -hmm. answer people will give you. But <laughs> you know, mainly, uh, you know, aside from the Tori Amos influence, uh, pretty much every contemporary singer songwriter and um, you know, sort of uh, dream pop artists that are currently out there really inspire me. You know, I'll, I'll rattle off names for you, like uh, Rufus Wainwright and uh, Ben Folds, uh, yeah. big fan of his. Um, you know, Fiona Apple. Um, and, and then, you know, more to the newer stuff, uh, like Sir Seeger Ross, M83. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, that's all stuff that's right up my alley. And uh, I'm really uh, excited to, to kind of mix as many genres as I possibly can, just to kind of get out the best, um, you know, the best, uh, the best songs I can make through, you know, that influence. Yeah, man. Yeah, I find it myself as well. You're better at draw from a wide well of influence than than limit yourself. It allows for more creativity. Oh, absolutely. That's the main thing. Has anyone else worked on the project with you so far, and will there be any features on it? Um, no, there there will be. Um, so far, I haven't had anybody else work with me on it. Uh, most of the most of the songs are, you know, like a hundred percent my my own stuff from scratch. Yeah. So, so um, I haven't really collaborated with anyone. May change as I get closer to the completion of the record. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. In terms of features, there is one possibility I may have, but I can't. Um, I don't want to take that cat out of the bag. <laughs> okay. Cool. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes fans don't necessarily get where an artist is coming from musically and they can't understand the style. Like certain people don't understand jazz when they're listening to it and whatnot. Mm -hmm. What albums would you recommend listening to in order for people to sort of find their way into your music, the, the music you're making? Um, well, I mean, I would, I would certainly recommend um, any of those artists that I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, for sure. But uh, Under the Pink from Tori Amos... Um, Boys for Pele, uh, Rufus Wainwright's um, Want One album is yeah. is, is, is amazing. Um, I would certainly recommend the When the Pawn album from Fiona Apple. 
Um, okay. Pretty much anything John Bryan produced. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think I think that would be you know a good inlet to the kind of music that is on this record. Um, not fully representative of just the the vein of them in terms of the artist being 100% honest and, uh, you know, self-sufficient in the writing and in the music, you know, which I think is the most important thing is just that the level of honesty and truth you can, you can convey in your music. That to me is what they do. And that's definitely the wavelength that I'm on right now. Yeah. Cool, man. Sounds very interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to that project personally. In songs like Porcelain, you've utilized harmonies and laven. Is this something that's specific to tone deaf, or does Peter Anthony Red have his own methods of recording? Um, it's definitely a, a different kind of sound. Um, the, okay. the tone, the tone deaf stuff, and I like to speak in the third person about tone deaf. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the tone deaf stuff is definitely has more of a, an urban edge to it. I feel like um, okay. the Peter Anthony Red stuff definitely would not play on any. On any uh, you know uh, college urban college radio station, any mix shows or anything like that, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, it's just the it, it might it might be a little bit too much uh, for for those kind of stations, but I mean yeah. the, the the you know my, the voice is, is definitely going to be similar, you know. Yeah. Uh, but the, <laughs> the vocals, the singing vocals, will definitely be uh, more way up front uh, than they than they are okay. on any of the tone deaf materials. So. Um, okay. Yeah, voice of the front center. Okay, cool. Uh, are you plan a tour with the material? Uh, not at the moment. Okay. Not at the moment, but that could change. Who knows? Yeah. Cool. Will you continue to make music under Peter Anthony Red as Peter Anthony Red, or is this sort of like a one-off project? Um, I'm going to be releasing an EP uh, at the end of May. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be a lead-in to the Hyperrealism album. So okay. technically, there's two projects. Um, after that, Scott, you know, it's it's a possibility I might do another one. But this is just this is a record that I've been working on for you know a long time, and uh, it's just been on the back burner for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I just I feel that the time is right to do it now, so that's why I'm doing it now. Okay, cool. Is there anything you'd like to add? Any dates, plugs, or even random ramblings? Just anything you'd like to throw out there for people? Um, yeah, I, you know, shout out to to Idiot Till Infinity. Uh, you. <laughs> uh, you know, for 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 uh, sh- again uh, putting a little shine on the kid, and um, <laughs> shout out to the whole Cuban Five crew and uh, all the open-minded, cool, and interesting people out there in the world that enjoy. The music and artists who flog themselves for their enjoyment. <laughs> Lord.